So today, AMD finally revealed the RX 9070 XT and RX 9070 graphics cards. And, of course, also therefore the RDNA 4 architecture itself, which... Look, the first thing I actually want to talk about in this video is how RDNA 4 looks to be a massive leap over RDNA 3. I mean, up to 40% higher performance per CU, up to double the AI performance, up to double the ray tracing performance compared to RDNA 3. And comparing the 5080 to the 9070 XT, I mean, the 5080 has a 6% larger die, 6 to 18% higher TDP, and a whopping 50% more memory bandwidth for only 9 to 13% more performance? What on earth is going wrong with NVIDIA's GeForce design teams? I mean, NVIDIA, how are you spending twice as much on R&D as AMD is, and AMD can still basically match your performance while using last-gen memory in a smaller die? Why does the 5070 Ti need 40% more bandwidth to trade blows with a 9070 XT? And actually, on the note of this slide on screen here, it does legitimately seem like AMD partially followed my advice for extreme models, clearly delineating between the standard ones and the pushed models that will aim to perform as close to an RTX 5080 as possible, but without AMD getting the backlash for the pricing that would be for those insane coolers. They get to have extreme variants that they can highlight. These types of ones are stronger than the 5070 Ti, and then they can have a base standard that doesn't go crazy with power consumption nor cost. I'm so happy to see them finally making this decision with their graphics cards. Oh, and thanks for the like, Frank. Um, by the way, Yes, I think performance should end up like how AMD has portrayed it today in final reviews because these numbers do line up with internal testing that I leaked from within AMD and because they come from within progress reports in AMD, I have no reason to believe AMD would lie to themselves. So, which actually speaking of performance slides, I also like how AMD mostly showed standard performance without using fake frames in most of their charts. And then when they showed fake frames, it was generally speaking mentioned in reference to the standard performance. It wasn't like here's a 5080 with their fake frames next to a 9070 XT with their fake frames. It was here's standard performance between graphics cards on the one hand. And then over here, this is the rough frame rate increase you can expect when using fake frames. That's important because it allows AMD to brag with ridiculous charts that go to the moon but it does something that everyone should be doing when they talk about fake frames never putting a graphics card with fake frames on the same chart as graphics cards that don't use them or use a different version of them anytime that happens i think it is very misleading to consumers and besides all that, I don't actually have much else to say about the performance of these RDNA 4 graphics cards. Nearly everything I leaked last year in a video, which of course was a time when we naively thought AMD wouldn't choose to change their naming scheme every five seconds, but in that video, everything from specs to performance to pricing, yep, this channel consistently did not believe the insane pricing rumors, to no reference cooler. I mean, basically, just the delayed launch is what really ended up as a major surprise for these graphics cards. Well, I guess there was one other surprise, not supplies, by the way, and it was that they once again priced two graphics cards very close to each other in pricing, putting the 9070 at $549 US and the 9070 XT at $599 US. A $50 price difference, just like they decided to do back in the day with the RX 5700 and 5700 XT, and of course also more recently with the RX 7700 XT and RX 7800 XT. AMD's done this before, but I will say this time... I have a leak for you today that explains why they would be priced fairly close together. Although before I get to that leak, I do want to put out a couple of bullet points here that doesn't require any sources, just in defense of 549 for the 9070, if you will. Again, if you ask me, I think it's priced too closely. I think it looks silly, but forget the 9070 XT even exists and just realize that at $549, the 9070 is the same MSRP as the 5070 while actually giving you enough VRAM, 16 gigabytes, not 12 gigabytes. It'll be a major issue for the 5070 in many games, even in 1440p without even going to ultra settings. But on top of that, the 9070 is also probably like 20% faster than the RTX 5070. So they're giving you more 20% more value directly in performance. And then I would argue at least another 10% more value with that VRAM. Some might argue more than 10% more value. So it is a fair price for this graphics card, 
besides that it's weird that it's priced so close to 90 70 xt additionally on, on top of that i think everyone might want to google msrp and remember what that actually means technically msrp is the starting point for the product suggested by the company it is the floor in pricing and for like minimum specs before things are added on and if you think about it the 9070 and 9070 XT have the same amount of RAM. They use the same die. I know it's disabled, but it costs the same amount of money to make. And if you were to use the cheapest coolers you can get away with, with both the 9070 and 9070 XT, the pricing difference between them is nearly nothing, actually. And so because of that, the floor, yeah, you could argue it should be pretty close. But the ceiling should be higher, right? Think about that. It costs about the same to make the cheapest 9070 and the cheapest 9070 XT, but there will be far less, I believe, long-term hyper overclock models trying to compete with a graphics card a tier higher uh, with compared to the 9070 versus 9070 XT. So yes, the floors are close because they cost almost the same to make with the minimum spec, but if you push them hard, that is where the 9070 XT will, on average, I believe from what I'm seeing from my sources behind the scenes, cost 15 to 20% higher on the street. But that third factor, that is one that was backed up to me today by multiple sources that does explain why their MSRPs are so close. And it does have to do with the supply differences between them. And it is quite stark. And I want to leak that to you and also leak to you what I'm hearing about RTX 5070 supply and also why the pricing for RDNA 4 may somewhat be temporary but before i get to all those bombshells an ad from micro center this piece of content is brought to you by micro center and their monitor madness event that is starting march 1st check out great deals on a wide range of monitors all month long uh and go to the link in the description to see those deals. Additionally, Micro Center is opening up a new store in Santa Clara, California. Sign up at the link below and receive a free 120 gigabyte flash drive when it opens this year. And then they also have a GPU trade-in program so that you can bring in your GPU and receive an offer the same day if you want to upgrade to one of these RDNA 4 graphics cards. And they also have a link below for all of their new tech news, and that includes RTX 5000 and RX 9000 releases. I don't know what else there really is to say about Micro Center. They have absolutely insane deals that are a place that i think is worth driving hours to if you want to do a new build so please if you're thinking of doing a new build right now and as i'm about to get to if you need to do a new build this year i do recommend it happens right now by the way um and you know if you're going to do that clicking on those links in the description to see all their deals directly helps moore's law is dead so support moore's law is dead by checking out micro center today all right back to the video so I am not going to put any leak slides on screen tonight. I just don't think it's really warranted. I'm just going to talk to you face to face here and hope you actually listen. But know that what I'm about to tell you about RDNA 4 supply, RTX 5070 supply and pricing, it's all really connected actually. This comes from half a dozen sources in both distribution and retail. No, I didn't just talk to one guy at an AIB. This came from multiple sources in multiple parts of the supply chain. And basically, well, first of all, I am told that supply is going to be significantly higher for RDNA 4 than it is from what we've seen with Blackwell. Expect three to ten times the shipments of RDNA 4 cards compared to something like an RTX 5080. Now, to be clear about that, though, it's more or less a standard launch, maybe slightly above average overall, I would say. It's just that when I say three to ten times more cards than the 5080 at launch, Blackwell was just that low volume of a launch. It was basically entirely fake. Um, I would roughly summarize the quantity for uh, 9070 series actually as around what the 7800 XT at launch, which was a lot. A lot of people were able to get one on launch day for an hour or so online. And I'm also told by another source this is like around what double what the 4070 Super had at launch, which was easy to get, although that card sold pretty badly the first week it came out. So overall, though, I would say that's good. That is good supply. But because Blackwell is basically unobtainium, I do not believe it is remotely enough supply to support the market. And because of that, I think it is going to sell out very quickly. In fact, on the NVIDIA end of the supply situation, I'm consistently hearing terrible 
things about the RTX 5070. The supply sounds like absolute garbage, believe it or not. I was hoping, speculating, not leaking, speculating for some sort of 5070 flood, but I don't think that's going to happen next week. I'm talking to people in warehouses that still have not received a single 5070 for distribution to retailers like Amazon and Best Buy and so on and so forth. So I think it's going to be RTX 5070 Ti supply at launch at best, and that was worse than the 5080. So do not expect the RTX 5070 to help anything. Uh, and in fact, I even hear that those will cost like $650 on average at best. So again, well above MSRP. Worse yet, though, on the NVIDIA end of the spectrum is in terms of NVIDIA increasing supply in the future. I was told not to expect anything but overpriced models of the 5080 in a couple months. And when I say an increase in like 5080 supply, I mean like 10 to 30 percent from the garbage we had at launch. So it's not like they're doubling, tripling, quadrupling supply of the 5080. There will be more. They will be grossly overpriced models. And they, I don't even know if people will notice the increase in 5080 supply because, you know, multiplying zero by 10 or even or by 1.3 in this case is still zero. Um, additionally, now this isn't a hundred percent consistent. This third point I want to get to here, you know, first I told you about the supply of the 9070 series. Then I just told you about the supply of Blackwell, which is bad. The third point here to keep in mind when you're considering if you want to try to get one of these RDNA 4 graphics cards is that it seems like the 9070 XT is going to have a ton more supply than the 9070. That's not all sources of mine. One of them said it was going to be 50-50, a distributor, but that was an outlier. Most people are saying radically, actually absurdly, maybe 10 times the supply for the 9070 XT versus the 9070. I would guess that it's at least a 3 to 1 ratio, therefore. And so when you see... 549 and 599 barely any of these cards need to be disabled because of how good the yields are with tsmc for an animator and so it's priced to reflect that yeah it's a little cheaper but there's not going to be a lot of them so it's pretty scarce in fact one source of mine directly compared it to the rx 6800 if you will remember from the rdna2 era there are a lot of people that were like why is the 6800 579 and the 6800 xt 649 it's because very few yields needed to be disabled as much to create a 6800 and there were some at launch but barely any almost no 6800 supply for most of rdna 2's life and in fact it wasn't really until rdna 3 that you started to see 6800s widely available as amd just dumped the bad yields they had been saving up for years so that's the sort of thing you should expect for the rx 9070 a 6800 like situation Oh, and I guess just to be clear about the MSRPs for the 9070 and the 9070 XT, yeah, a lot of them are going to be above MSRP. I don't have an average price yet, um, which I might have one before the launch that I can communicate like I did where I was told the average price of a 5070 Ti adjusting for quantity per model and pricing was like $950, not $750. I don't have an average price, but I, I there are a lot of 9070s above $600 from what I'm seeing behind the scenes, and plenty of 9070 XTs above 650 So will there be some around MSRP? I believe so. But yes, there's going to be a lot of marked up cards. Now, they're not marked up percentage-wise remotely as much as what we're seeing from the 5090s that are going for oh, God knows how much now. Can't even buy them anyways. The 5080s and like the $1,000 5070 Ti. So it's not like... AIBs are milking them as much. And to also be fair, the AI, a lot of the AIB models for the 9070 XT will perform quite a bit faster than the stock specifications, but do expect to see that. Uh, however, also understand that you're probably still going to want to jump on these because pricing is expected to go up more by April. That's right. And this is probably the biggest bombshell in this video. It was explained to me a few days ago, so... You know, I started to catch wind of this around Tuesday evening. It was explained to me, because I kept asking all my sources about pricing, that AMD was shipping RX 970s and RX 970 XTs with the expectation that the MSRP was going to be $599 and $699. And I'm sure that's why we saw a lot of tech tubers freaking out about RDNA 4 potentially having high pricing. But also, a few days ago, so not yesterday, a few days ago, I was also directly told that this pricing was basically fake and likely to be adjusted down for a pleasant surprise through rebates and that's why you didn't see me freaking out about pricing any at any point really over the past year because i just didn't buy any of the high pricing rumors for a second having said all of that notice that i said they would cover the price drop with a rebate you see you have to understand how this works these cards were already at micro centers some of them months ago 
And that means that the retailers already paid AMD for these graphics cards or paid AIBs through AMD, whatever, you know, so they already may have paid for a card that might have been sold for $700, like $675 or something, and then they'd make like $25 off of it. Yes, by the way, that's how little the margin is for retailers, by the way. But anyways, and then AMD told them, oh, so you know those cards you already paid a lot of money for, more than you're hearing we're probably gonna price them at? Well, we don't know the final price, so whatever we decide, we will give you a rebate in the back end so that you can still make some margin when you sell these cards at like Best Buy, Amazon, or Micro Center, or whatever. Yeah, that's happening. There is a rebate. They haven't quite figured out how much margin to give the retailers, actually, from what I'm hearing, and they're actually pretty mad at AMD right now, but there should be one. But I have been warned that whatever the rebate is, it's probably going to expire by April. You see, they're going to adjust and help them sell these cards closer to MSRP with rebates, but the rebates expire eventually. And this is supposed to coincide with when AMD expects more tariff repercussions to hit their supply chain so that, and they're not really lying, they can go, well, look, now all of this price increase has happened. Graphics card prices are going up right now. There's nothing we can do due to tariffs, which is true. They can't sustainably, they don't believe so. A lot of these graphics card models with these sorts of coolers, if shipping prices go up as much as they expect them to, and if the tariffs keep being increased between the U.S. and other countries, they, they, they can't. There's just going to be too many ripple effects. Having said that, and that's the part where they're not lying, there is a certain artificialness, if you will, to the early pricing of these graphics cards that is going to expire when they can blame tariffs, which will affect them. But yeah, that, that that's what's going on. And so, look, I don't like reporting bad news. Good news gets me more clicks on average. But I do think you all have a right to know that this is going to happen, that despite a lot of these cards from RDNA 4 being above our uh, MSRP at launch, although, again, not as bad as NVIDIA, I don't believe, that as bad as some of that may look, you need to know that NVIDIA ain't going to do anything to help this market for months, if not the whole god dang year, and that the pricing for these RDNA 4 graphics cards is almost certainly going to shoot up even more over the coming months. And so you deserve to know the truth about that and plan accordingly. And you really should get these if you want this sort of a graphics card this year, because I don't think pricing is going to get better over time anytime soon. Don't wait. Oh, and one more thing. This is just amusing. I heard from one source, so I'm not going to say I'm married to it, but I heard the 9060 XT is launching in April. So that's a bit more specific than what I saw AMD say today. Just thought you guys should know. And you should also know that if you're thinking of wanting a cheaper card from the RDNA 4 lineup, that that graphics card is likely, in my opinion, to perform between an RTX 4060 Ti uh, and a 7700 XT. Now, if they push the clocks really hard to justify a higher MSRP, which maybe they will, given what the market looks like right now, maybe it could even come to be just a little weaker than a 4070. But yeah, there will be more videos about that leading up to its launch in the future. For the present, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a comment below. Tell me what you think about what was revealed today. And also like it, share it, and subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead on YouTube and ring that bell button so you don't miss all the upcoming scoops that will come out of this channel. Speaking of scoops, you know, the independent journalism this channel does is actually a ton of work calling up sources, talking to them, trying to figure out what's going on and cross-referencing information, not just done by me, but done by Carbon Cry, who assists with that sort of stuff, and also by Gerard, who does editing, Dan, who helps with research and also is the co-host on multiple podcasts. It's a lot of work. And if you want to support our independent journalism, please support us on Patreon. Even just the $2 tier gets you access to a ton of dive drinks. We just did an interview with a developer who's explaining why the situation with PhysX and Blackwell is a much worse omen for the future than you'd think it would be. There's a whole, like I think it's like 40 minute or more, or like one hour video there for you if you join the lowest tier of the Morris Law said Patreon. And then there's other dive drinks as well and tons of other bonus content that you'll get access to and a Discord and, and so much more. Um, so please consider supporting us there if you have the extra even $2 a month. And then for everybody else, no matter what though, hey, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. <laughs>